Hey guys, Tools20 here, welcome back to Oceania. We've got a pretty big episode today, pretty jam-packed full of content. I've got a big build that we're going to chip away at in this episode, but I've also got a few announcements that I do need to talk about. Number one, we are driving over the Balti Bridge, which is a correction from last episode, I was calling the Bolt Bridge. And it's just looking pretty damn fine around here. This is why I included a driving cinematic just for that opener. But I tell you what, the area around here completely changes at the end of this episode. So just stick around for the cinematics at the very end. They're going to really showcase how this area is starting to turn out. And I did mention that I wanted to do a big expansion in the next episode, but I don't think I'm going to do that in the next vid because we have, I mean, we've had these amazing custom assets created by my Discord community and also Seabud who has gone and made them into assets. They've been sitting on the Steam Workshop for like a month now. I haven't touched them because I've been a little bit ahead in my Oceania episode. So this video was recorded, pre-recorded like a month ago. So I've been quite far ahead within Oceania for a little while because I wanted to chip away at some Springfield which means I haven't had a chance to even place down any of those amazing assets. So I'm going to be focusing on that next week, embedding all that unique and custom content within this series. I think it's just going to make this thing just, ah, just amazing. So I can't wait to start doing that. That's going to be next week. Happening right now on my Discord server is a competition to create custom billboards for Oceania to advertise these companies, to advertise these companies and businesses operating in Oceania, we've got to advertise them. So we're going to do a billboard competition. Seabud's going to create these into props. There is a template on Discord. We'll choose the best ones after about three weeks of uploading uh, different designs. You guys upload the designs. We'll end up choosing the best ones and they'll be turned into props and then placed within the city. And we're going to have just a pretty crazy, amazing connected beyond my wildest dreams series it's just gonna be super fun so that's what's gonna be happening over the next few weeks so if you'd like to join that the link to my discord is in the description below and extra information about that is on discord but it's also my website if you want to check that out i think that might be it in terms of announcements there might be a few more rolling through this episode when they pop into my head but let's start talking about what we're doing in this build so the objective for today is I wanted to flesh out this whole area, make that transition from the city, the CBD, down towards this ocean front. This is, I guess, repurposed land, was once all industrial, now it's slowly becoming a, a very nice, very um, touristic area with hotels and bars and cafes and restaurants, all that good stuff. I did want to show that that industrial past was still around, so you're going to see some elements of that around this area, as well as some more modern buildings, some more touristic areas, and putting in those cafes and restaurants, those hotels, I think is going to be something that draws in the crowds, get a bit more tourism coming through, especially when we start adding in that, we'll start adding a bit more public transport. I'm really looking forward to start seeing people moving around the place. Um, and speaking of people moving around the place, we are working on this tunnel going underneath this road. So I wanted to make this a little bit more custom, didn't really want to use the tunnels or yeah, yeah, I guess the tunnels that come with the road network. A lot of people are pointing out that the arrows are pointing in the wrong direction. I'm totally aware of that. Unfortunately, that's something within the asset itself. I can't change it. I think it's just because whoever made the network made it so that it's for right-hand traffic only and or well, didn't anticipate people using it for left-hand traffic but uh luckily all that's hidden amongst my custom underground area here i really love this this is made with retaining walls i think it might be a key that i'm using and now you can see i am starting to add in a bit of that industrial area down below we have this old building i am imagining this is an abandoned old factory and We've just got some parking lots and just some mixed commercial areas. I'm keeping this pretty low detail. I'm not doing any lines for the parking. I'm just placing down some of the parking zones so that cars will actually park there, but there's no lines. And I feel like an area like this doesn't really need lines. So I think that just works a little bit better anyway. But just having a bit of a think about what would sit underneath an interchange like this. 
Of course, this would have been probably a pretty clear area. This would have been um, a big chunk of just concrete for the industrial area, whether this was a dock or whether this was just a space where industrial stuff was kept. And this big interchange definitely wouldn't be a nice area to put anything that would be trying to draw tourism. So I've tried to keep this area pretty much just commercial, uh, just like very random blocks of commercial. And then once you're in this area, it starts to become a little bit nicer. So there's still that industrial past around here and I quite like that. I like that it's not just a super nice tree lined roads, big, nice expensive hotels. No, there's still a little bit of just yuckiness just below this interchange and then it starts opening up to something a little bit nicer. Now we're starting to work on probably the funnest part of this build. Uh, this is going to be a building, like a hotel block that sits on top of this highway. And so it's not a tunnel, it's a building. So the building was built after the highway and it was built on top of it. We've got a few sitting on top of the highway around Darling Harbour in Sydney. I really like them. They hide the highway really well and I think it's like a really great use of space. Particularly when you're trying to hide ugly highways like this. You, I feel like you don't even realize there's a highway even going around these areas because it's so tucked in between buildings and underneath buildings and through buildings. It's really quite cool and I wanted to create something similar. I didn't really want this highway to be front and center, even though mine's probably a little bit more obvious than the one down in Sydney. At first, I was trying to figure out what building I was going to do, what sort of technique I was going to use. So I was trying to use the ploppable surface and then I was going to just put a building on top and try and make some walls. It wasn't really working how I wanted it to, so instead I've used this other building, I've actually clipped a couple of them together. I've used this building and it's got this big orange base to it. And I thought this one would be a pretty good base for the building because there's already so much stuff on top of it. I don't really have to detail or add any extra bits that show that the building's not just a building placed on top of a um, big concrete area. Instead, it's pretty well integrated some, you know, benches and you know, glass and windows and stuff like that. So I think it works. It works a lot better than what I was trying to um, do before. And then I've used procedural objects to open up one side of it. And this is where the traffic goes through. Uh, one part that I really love about these areas underneath these buildings is the foundations that have to be put into place so that there's um, you know enough support for the building. I want to do something similar. So I am using again procedural objects and I'm using one of these uh, supports. Originally I was trying to do it underneath the building but then I ended up just doing it um, on this grassed area and just stretching it out and then transferring it over to where the building is. But it wasn't as simple as that. Unfortunately, because the I've chosen a chunk of highway that changes in size. So I've had to go back and just make sure that nothing was clipping in. There will be a shot as the traffic goes underneath. So there'll be like a tr first person driving vids as you go underneath this area. Should see a pretty seamless area. Should be nothing clipping in. Um, but this side of the wall was you know, there's a bit of there's a bit of imperfection. So I'm using this technique, which is just so useful. I'm using a wall with a similar texture and then recoloring it to as close to this color as possible. And then I can use procedural objects just to cover up some of the walls, some of the imperfections, and that works pretty well. Um, and unfortunately, there's there's like a lot of stuff going on underneath here. So there's a lot of stuff you're not seeing behind the behind the scenes. Um, a lot of me making sure that there's no clipping going on and uh, it was pretty tricky, you know, <laughs> once you get inside these um, buildings, it's really hard to see what you're doing. So placing them alongside in a uh, more open area gives you a bit more of an uh, idea of where those areas are going to sit and then you can just transfer it over rather than having to worry too much about, you know, getting inside the building and making sure everything's perfect like that. So that's what I'm doing over here. I uh, found, and this is something that I remember CityWalk, CityWall complaining about in his Mars series, but a lot of assets don't have any mesh or don't have any, um, any surface when you're looking from the ground upwards. So I had to find an asset that did. I found this, I'm trying to remember what it's called. I think it's called a deck. It's called a, um, it's like a, you create your own footbridge and that actually does have this really great 
um, ploppable surface that you can look from the ground upwards works really well so we ended up using that so hopefully when you take the POV through the building you should see a roof in there and it's not going to be a pretty roof you can see I am uh, trying to keep it pretty bare like I don't really want any of that um any of that color coming through instead I want it to just be like concrete and it's that really nice contrast from this beautiful building on the outside and then you drive through the middle of it and it's actually pretty you know it's just a building <laughs> it's just like concrete walls and that's it uh, but yeah that's looking um, pretty sweet at that stage and then the next challenge that I had was it was just kind of randomly placed you know it's it's a really random thing to have a building just on top of a highway so I needed to integrate it within the other part of the city as you can see there's a bit of a height difference the CBD that's pretty high up and then um, there's a highway and then you've got the other side of the highway and there's a pretty big height difference between the three areas you know none of them are on the same one so I had to try and figure out a way of blending it into the rest of this area there's also this highway creating this massive barrier between the CBD and this area down here and that would have been fine when all this was industrial only freight would have to get through here that was coming in through this train lines coming in through a couple of roads that were in other locations but now that the CBD is connected or wants to be connected to this touristic area we needed to make some pathways we needed to make areas that were easy to get from one side to the other this is a pretty similar scenario with Sydney We've got the CBD and then we have Darling Harbour and you know before Darling Harbour was actually this touristic area it was an industrial hub and there was this like big disconnection between the two which is fine but now that we've got Darling Harbour we want more tourism coming through and even since I've been alive I've seen lots of infrastructure being put in there's been um, additions to walkways and there's been um, connections from like the central station even town hall and just different ways of getting people to this area now an area that was pretty cut off from the main CBD and now it is very much connected so I have to do something kind of similar with this with this situation because we've got this highway it really cuts off this area from the rest of the city so I've got to find ways of reconnecting and there is that one main road that we have going underneath the highway and then we have this this uh this other avenue now that um goes over the top and then with that building sitting on top of the highway i figured this would be a great opportunity to have some sort of pedestrian pathway so i have just dragged out a network but i'm going to come back to it and just make it look a little better i uh probably make it a little bit too fancy but <laughs> i kind of i figured it because it's so uh, like it's one of the main things that you see when you're um, in this area so I figured we better put a little bit of detail into this now we're starting to work on something a bit interesting a bit different I did not expect to be doing something like this in this episode this was um, a bit of a I don't know just sort of just sort of happened and what I wanted to put is so I wanted to put like a pretty large building over on um, that waterfront and some of the buildings that I wanted to use were within the campus DLC and I've been doing this thing where I've been using procedural objects to turn them into procedural objects and then where I can place them wherever I like rather than having to make a university area or a campus area but then I thought about it a little while and I figured that there are actually some really great buildings within the I think it's the tech campus that I would like to use within this area within the city and I thought well actually why don't we just make this whole area into a university and you might be thinking well isn't it a little bit strange to be having a campus that essentially is the entire CBD of the city yeah it's a little strange but in reality a lot of campuses actually sit within the cities and they might just be a building or there might be a couple of buildings in Sydney I know we've got a couple of uh, campuses that sit well a couple of universities and you know this whole area now well, I guess not the whole area but a big portion of this um, city is now a uh, campus and now a tech campus and we're gonna have little buildings or not little buildings but big buildings scattered around the city because I guess this is where a lot of people would be coming for university and that's actually kind of cool because it means that we can start placing down some of these campus uh, 
buildings, some of these tech ones that I've never really used before, and they actually fit really well within the city and you know that within this like city context i think they look awesome and the way that they're going to function as well you know we've, this is already so well connected with the city there's lots of great infrastructure there's transportation it's just really well set up so it's kind of just changed my perspective about how you can use these campus areas don't just go okay this area over here to the corner of the city this is where the campus is no you, you don't have to do that you can make campuses as big as you like and then place buildings use all that DLC, you know, that DLC is great, got some excellent buildings in there and now you've actually got this great opportunity to use a lot of them. But let me just quickly go back to the first building that I placed down which is uh, I guess the main building of the campus and you know, I, I guess of course it is got something to do with the university but I, I want to try and imagine that it's not really part of the university that actually kind of looks as if it's some sort of government building or a museum or an art gallery and it's got some sort of big grand government sort of feel to it so I've placed it there and it's great because I really needed something else there I feel like I needed another big building I had a lot of like very dense sort of city at the moment and I wanted just to make a couple of um, blocks that were just dedicated to the one building or park and you can see I'm placing some like old factory elements and some graffiti. This whole area just has a whole vibe going on now. I really love that so much industrial and it's just really quite a rundown area. And then it opens up to what we, it's going to be the super nice touristic area that we haven't even de developed yet. And still probably a little while away from developing. But I'm just adding in some minor detail things, just like some real easy little bits just to make this area feel a little bit more complete. Power lines, trees and some roads. Uh, I, added, I added in that road down there because I wanted it to really show that this area is super dense. There's streets and side alleys just all over the place and this highway is really just tucked, you know, just really tucked into a little area. So it definitely did not have very much room to um, expand into. And now we're starting to work on that footbridge that I was speaking about gonna detail this thing up because it is front and center this is like the main uh, main tunnel this area I love I think it's really cool and I thought I'd give it a bit of an old sort of rustic vibe I'm using procedural objects just with one of these pillars uh, one of these supports and using that for some some side railings of this footpath and so I forgot to talk about that main building that I placed down. So the whole reason why I turned this area into a campus is because I wanted to place down this massive building that's on the waterfront. I'm trying to remember what building it is. I think it might be the police academy. And, you know, I'm glad that it has some sort of functionality, but I'm sort of not imagining that it's a police academy. I mean, maybe it is, but it probably in my mind, not probably in my mind, in my mind, it's some sort of hotel or you know some sort of mall or something because it does sort of have that appearance to it um, I am splicing in a couple of other buildings just to really sell this area as that touristic area we still got to come down here and work on it but I'm just sort of putting in the foundations just to get a bit of an idea but um, as you can see I have made that footpath go inside this building I thought that would be um, like a good way to make that transition to this area it's, it's pretty high up so you know every time I dragged out the network to touch the ground or you know tried to make stairs or whatever it was always felt felt way too tall you know it didn't feel like I could achieve the um, look that I was after so I thought this would probably be a better way of just hiding all that ugliness and I kind of like it even though I had to make a bit of a pretend tunnel into the wall of the building I think that's fine and then the last thing that I'm up to I am just Putting in some shrubbery around here, the ground is all rough and gravelly because I mean it's still all industrial in this area, there's not really um, you know, not really much potential for anything nice to ground here. There's some shrubs and some trees, I mean I feel like they're just more overgrown elements of it. You can see I'm putting some vines on the walls and some graffiti too just to really sell that this place is uh, you know, it's definitely, definitely up and coming, you know, there's still parts that are really nice and there's other parts that are just like yeah like we're not we're not quite there yet <laughs> this this part over here not quite there yet 
But anyway, guys, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in, watching all the way to the end. Please get involved with the billboard competition. They're always super fun. Go ahead and check out some of the uploads that people have already, um, already done on Discord. Links to that are in the description below. Big shout outs to the wonderful people on Patreon supporting the channel. Emil, Dominic Martin, Ariane Banerjee, Tyler Smith, Lawrence Pitts, Murph Compacted Germ, Jibba, Aces Punk, Thomas Riley, Nick Kashab, Sebastian Hasselberg, Axaris, and Michael Danger. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!